hello. So I want to share an outlook that I have that you probably don't have. I don't think many people do have look at things in the way that I have learned to look at them. Doesn't mean that you're supposed to think the way I think or believe what I believe. You do you. I'm just sharing my point of view because I know it's an, a different uh, uh, point of view than most people have. And until I believed something that I read in the Bible, I didn't have the ability to look at the world through from the point of view where I'm looking at it from and that I'm going to share with you, okay? There's bad people in the world. There's very bad people in the world. There's people that um, do just about everything that we think is bad in this world. And I've learned to look at what is bad from outside of this world. Because you can't see it from it in this world. You can't see it. Um, it's something that changed when I believed something. And and it's a, like a, what a lot of people would call a crazy thing to believe or a stupid thing to believe or just outlandish, uh, ridiculous, okay? So that's probably going to be your reaction. But these bad people in the world, they aren't really that bad. What we call bad is a, a, a mistaken idea of right and wrong. We don't, we don't think the way that we can think if we read the Bible. And there's a different way to look at the world than you're looking at it right now. So these bad people, they're just like you. Same as you. You might be a good person or whatever. Good and bad really don't have any meaning to people in this world. Um, I mean, I think it was Jesus said that no man is good but God himself. Um, and I think I know why he said that. Because we're all in the wrong state of mind, every one of us. And it's a secret that's being revealed. That's why my life has changed in the last eight years or whatever. It's because things have been revealed. Things that nobody in the world was thinking about or, or comprehending. Nobody. But then, seven, eight years ago, it came out. It, people were talking about it. Lots of people talking about it. It came out. And when it came out, people said it was ridiculous, said it was dumb, myself included. I was like, what is this garbage? But it wasn't. It wasn't wrong. It was true. It was true and I thought it was crazy. Until I got a different point of view, however that may have happened. But why is it that some people can see that the Earth's not a globe and other people don't see it? They can't, it's like they, they're missing the ability to look at the world they're in. And again, I'm speaking this from my point of view because I have people that believe they're on a globe subscribe to my channel. A lot of people, um, so, and they, they know that I believe the Earth is flat. But why is it? Why is it that I say that the earth is flat and especially that the earth is not rotating? Why is it that I can say that and anybody will take me at all? But why would anybody even, you know, hear those words and not laugh? Well, because that's the world we live in. It's not rotating. You can look at it. You live in it. You live on it. You, you walk on it. You drive your car on it. It's not moving. If you think it's rotating, that's a belief that you have based that doesn't have any basis of, of truth in it. If we're rotating, that would mean we're rotating and we're not. Um, and yes, I've been on your globe for 37 years. I understand 
all about it. We wouldn't feel it. Just like if we weren't moving, we wouldn't feel it. Isn't that interesting? So because people think that gravity is a thing and there's things orbiting bodies in space and mass attracts mass and bends space time and all this stuff, none of that has anything to do with the real world you live in. It's all concepts and ideas and beliefs. It's religion. So are you in a religion? If you're on a globe, you're in a religion. Because you have to believe things that are not that there's no evidence for. That's called faith, really. You have faith in some in a lie. That's sad. But anyway, I shouldn't go there because I'm not trying to like offend people. I just think that if you think the earth's rotating, put it in the comments. I want the evidence. Any kind of evidence. And I don't mean something you write on paper and do some formula. I'm not talking about math. I'm not talking about anything but actual reality. Show me something in reality that says we're rotating. And don't say that the sky's rotating because you're, it's like you're double contradicting yourself. If I ask you why you think the ground is rotating, you can't point up to the sky and say the sky's rotating. Because that's what I'm saying. The sky's rotating. The ground is not. So it's like one or the other. Either you believe the actual truth about the reality you're in that it's I mean look look out at the wi window right there see that truck the wheels aren't turning on that truck is the truck moving is it rotating no it's just sitting in one spot it's not moving it's not rotating it's not in motion being in motion is much different than being not in motion they're like opposite okay so this point of view, where, why did I realize that and, and say that? Just, let's just take the earth rotating thing. Why did I, why did I suddenly realize that? What, what made that happen? And this is one of the things that in the community of people that have experienced the same thing in their life in the last seven or eight years, and there's a lot of them, Almost zero of them think of it the way that I see it. And, and actually, the way that I see it came to my eyes or came to me the same way that the earth not rotating thing came to me. And, and now everyone has their own beliefs. You might believe that there's no, that the Bible's not true. Okay, that's a belief. I happen to believe that the Bible is true and that the God in the Bible is actually the maker, the, the highest authority of, of creation. So whether you believe that or not, if you've experienced this truth, if you've experienced truth in your life, you have to ask yourself where it came from. And I know almost anybody that realizes this truth realizes that there's someone up there that made everything happen just the way it, it is happening and both good and evil they've done they've created everything and i would call it a higher power or you could call it whatever you want some people call it the source some people call it whatever but you know that it's it's a a being that's higher than us has more ability and more power and more supernatural power so so that means like the nature of this world that we understand physics and things things that go up and over that and and can can change the laws of physics like jesus christ when he would heal someone from their blindness or any of the um, number of miracles that he did he would change the physics of whatever was and in some way change it to glorify God and this is what he did and this is one of the reasons why people uh, followed him follow him but one of the the ways that I understand this truth coming to me is the same way that Jesus 
um, would change the laws of physics and make the blind man be able to see again. Someone that's been blind their whole life or their hand was crippled or whatever. And he would change the physics. He would do a supernatural thing. It wasn't natural. It was like supernatural. It didn't go by the laws of nature that we understand. Okay. It, it like, I don't know what the right words are. It paused those for a moment, did whatever changes it wanted to make, and then resumed. Okay. It's called a miracle. Um, that is how my eyes started to realize some of these things. So in the same way that Jesus took some dirt off the ground and he spit in the, his hand and he like mixed it up and I think he calls it spittle and he rubbed it on the guy's eyes, the blind man, and then he told him to go wash his eyes off. And when he did, when he washed the mud off, he saw, he, he was like able to physically see. And whether you believe that happened or that it's true or not, the point is that we all that have had this truth come to us, we've all experienced very much the same thing as that blind man did, but in a, like a, a spiritual way, or if that's the right word, um, it's a supernatural vision of truth. A supernatural vision of truth. But another supernatural vision of truth is how I've started to look at this deception that has taken place. And this is where I uh, am a different outlook on this than most anybody, most people in the truth, this community. Um, because they, they, a lot of them say space is fake and a lot of them say NASA lies and fake X and things like that. And I get it and I, I used to think the same way. I used to think the exact same way. But reading something that Paul wrote, and not only what Paul wrote, but some of the things Jesus said, um, and some of the things that are written in Revelation, I've come to the understanding, and, and this is the part that sounds crazy, that there's no conspiracy. There's no human conspiracy. NASA is, is the people that work at NASA. Anybody, everybody that works at NASA is a human being. They get out of bed like you and they're tired and they have to take a shower and brush their teeth and get ready and feed themselves and take care of their family. And every single person that works at NASA lives the same life as you do. Maybe a different job or different interests, but they're the same person on the inside as you. There is no elite. There is no elite. If you think there's elite, then you're really not believing what Paul wrote to the Ephesians, first of all. But this, he wrote that we're not struggling against flesh and blood. And the context that he wrote it, wrote about it, he was talking about the, the fiery darts of the devil and to how to avoid them. Um, this armor that we can put on and, and like the word of God and uh, we, we need to put our defenses up against uh, our, our adversary. And the problem that I see happening and this is wh where it becomes, I guess, controversial, not to me, but I guess it becomes controversial. The things they're doing up in space and the things that NASA is involved in, they're all lies, okay? But they're all very real. And that's the, that's the difference. If you think NASA's faking space, you're not believing what the Bible is it says about not struggling against flesh and blood, but actually against spirits that are in the heavens, evil spirits in the heavens, the rulers of the darkness of this world. And that's another thing, darkness. People don't look at darkness the way I do. I believe what God said. That there was darkness upon the face of the deep. I believe what when God said he divided the light from the darkness, I believe what he said. The light he called day, the darkness he called night. Space is in the night sky. It is night, it's darkness. 
It's not fake. It's not a vacuum. It is a supernatural realm. It's not a realm where physics applies like like we would think like time, space, and matter and that, that uh, elements and things. It's not like that. It's celestial. And for us to understand celestial, I think we can't be in these human bodies. But I've learned that there is no liars at NASA. I mean, I'm sure people, everybody lies. But there's no deception happening that has, th this deception has not come about by people lying. I mean, by people trying to lie, okay? This elite group, this doesn't exist. And so this outlook is controversial because people think that there is a more powerful person than them that that has somehow this holding power to hold uh, power like to deceive the world and that they do it on purpose and all this stuff. Once you start to look at the world the way that I'm, t that I'm looking at it, everything about this deception changes and you understand it entirely different. The globe, okay, the globe, well, I can't say the globe, the solar system, okay, the solar system has been a deception since the fourth day of creation. Men have dreamt up and imagined a solar system since the fourth day of creation. And that's a secret that was kept from mankind. It was kept hidden. And now that that secret is not hidden and that we understand, many of us understand that it's pure deception, it's a lie and it's only imaginary. It's only something we were taught. No one's ever observed it. No, There's really no reason. Just because throughout the year they think that the planets go around the sun. Well, I think they do go around the sun throughout the year. The planets. Earth is not a planet. All of this is happening up in our sky above Earth. We live on the Earth. It's the only place that's not a light in the sky. You don't go up to those lights in the sky. Those are, if you do, it's strong delusion because the, okay, we aren't struggling against flesh and blood. If you can actually look at the world that way, you'll understand. First, first question you're going to ask yourself is, well, then who's, where's this deception coming from? It's coming from the very place that you think is, is a place to go explore called space. There's evil spirits there that assume different forms. And specifically, seven, that their sole purpose since the fourth day of creation when God created the sun, moon, and stars and placed them in the firmament, seven of those stars did not obey God and did not come forth at the appointed time that God commanded them. Now this you don't have to believe either, but I understand why space became a thing. It was bound to come with technology because men started flying and why not fly higher? Why not fly faster? Well, because it's it's blaspheming God's tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. That's a real world up there called heaven. And there's many things there. Just like on earth, there's many countries, there's many nations, there's many cultures. There. Just like that, heaven is above us. And if we think that we're going to put our earth stuff up there... That brings about the end of the world. Or it brings about the end of the age. Because the sky falls at the end of the age. And it's because of men. And it's because they're flying. And they push it too far. And here we are. Living our lives. Learning about these deceptions and the, the truth. 
So all I would say to end this video, all I would say is I'm not telling you to believe me. I'm, it's nothing, it, it's nothing I really have an interest in. I don't want you to be deceived. I don't want you to think that, uh, people that aren't lying are lying so that you accuse them falsely. I don't want that. I don't want people that haven't seen the truth to look and say, I don't think there's a conspiracy because that seems implausible. So I don't understand this truth. I'm not going to look at it. I don't want that to happen because it's not an auto hoax thing to, it's not, I'm saying you don't want to auto hoax everything. People think that rockets and satellites are fake and everything, but it's because they don't look into what actually is happening. I mean, how many people say that rockets are, or rockets don't go into orbit or whatever, or they say their rockets go into the ocean, rockets are helium balloons. All the, how many of those people can tell you what SpaceX is building in Boca Chica, Texas? I'm sure a lot of them could, but more because what they're building in Boca Chica, Texas is worldwide popular. It's very famous. But, um, and if the people paid attention, the people that are saying that they're lying and they're faking it, if they would pay attention to what's actually happening, because you can, because again, it's a world famous subject is the, the, oh, I got my lights on too. The thing that this is rockets is so worldwide popular that there have been a lot of people that have moved to Boca Chica to set up live streams with cameras pointed at this thing that they're building in Boca Chica, Texas. And it's quite a huge undertaking that, that SpaceX is doing. It's quite a huge project that they're doing down there. Yet, if you don't look at it, if you if you don't pay attention to reality, it's no big deal. But it will be a big deal when the sky rolls up like a scroll. That's what I know. I don't know when that is. I just know that what the prophets wrote, the people can't even believe. So the words of the prophets get thrown out. They get they get discarded and uh, of none effect, of, of no... Uh, they don't have any influence on the uh, people that are prophesied for has zero influence on them. They do not care what the prophets wrote. They believe what makes sense to them in this world. And things like, like an elite group of liars that are lying to the world about space or the globe or whatever. When you see it from my point of view, not my point of view, Paul's point of view, okay? That came from Paul. That's that that's where I first thought about it. Because of Ephesians 6:12. We struggle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and the rulers of the darkness of this world. That is the darkness of this world. Space, whatever you want to call it, the night sky where the stars are, the firmament. It's a place of darkness. Okay, it's the darkness upon the face of the deep in the second verse of your Bible. And still, these people, m most of them, have not ever even thought about the darkness upon the face of the deep. They hear the word deep and they say, oh, that's the ocean. When it's not, <laughs> not at all. It's a sea, it's an abyss, it's a, a deep abyss, and it's w waters, but they're not on the earth they're above the earth and god is right above them they're underneath god's feet the dark waters and thick clouds of the skies um it's god's secret place and i think it's going to stay a secret probably until it consumes everything down here until darkness pours in from the sky we don't understand what the celestial realm is. 
although they think that they do. We've got a lot to learn, but I don't think we're ever going to learn it until it's all uh, something we are, we've already experienced. Just like the disciples. You know, they didn't know that Jesus was going to be crucified. Did you? They didn't know that. They didn't understand that until after it happened. Even though he straight up told them the Son of Man is going to be crucified or going to be, I can't remember exactly what he said. He told them what was going to happen. They just didn't comprehend it. They didn't hear him. Then when it happened, they knew, whoa, this is the Son of God. <laughs> but anyway, I got to go. Look at it however you want. It's just a different world of deception when you see everyone falling for another deception. I don't understand. This is my point of view. Not to offend, but to make people think. Have a good one.